Hey, Yankees fans, how's it going? Good morning. As always, this is Felix from NYYNews.com, or like almost us. As you've seen, join our new forums. From there, I'm going to pick out articles, videos that you guys make, and promote you on official NYYNews.com YouTube channel that has close to 2,000 subscribers. Also, if you write articles, I will feature you on NYYNews.com. So, Rise and shine. What a perfect day, right? I can sense a few trades going down. The Mets are hot on Todd Frazier's behind. I can see Todd Frazier signing with the Mets. The Mets fans really like Todd Frazier with the thumbs down guy. He'll be a perfect fit with the Mets. The guy has charisma, personality. He'll just fit right in. And the Mets have a nasty store in the rotation. You can see. I can see uh, Matt Harvey bouncing back. He has to as he is a free agent in 2019. Baseball players in particular love to have career years once their contracts are up. So you can see Matt Harvey bouncing back. And I can see the Mets as a playoff team, even if they don't add uh, Todd Frazier. But he will contribute to the Mets and certify that they will be a playoff contending team. So that's where I see Todd Frazier landing. So now, you Darvish. Supposedly the Cubs are the favorites to land you Darvish. I don't know why a veteran like Darvish would prefer playing in Chicago, especially in that old stadium. You would think that he would prefer a newer stadium. But who knows? Who knows what goes down behind the scenes and who knows how they sell these players to sign with them. Who knows? Maybe... The taxes are good. Maybe they don't lose out on a high percentage of their contracts. Who knows? So, Jacoby Ellsbury, like I said, people keep saying Jacoby Ellsbury is going to remain a Yankee. No, the decision has already been made that he will not be a Yankee in 2018. Also, the Dodgers are trying to dump uh, Matt Kemp, and Matt Kemp has worse numbers than Jacoby Ellsbury. Jacoby Ellsbury isn't that bad, but the WAR. Uh, Jacoby Ellsbury has a better rating. So people are saying that it's impossible to dump Matt Kemp, but it helps Jacoby Ellsbury's chances because he is better numbers-wise than Matt Kemp. I don't. Ha I have no idea why the Dodgers traded for Matt Kemp, and now they want to trade him. It makes no sense. These guys are taking a whole bunch of uh, contracts upon themselves. I guess they want to dump him to get Darvish, make a pitch to him. But, um, yeah, um, for the Yankees, I don't know. I don't see them going after or getting you, Darvish, at this point. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I would prefer a headhunter like Lynn, some aggressive type pitcher on the Yankees that comes from a franchise similar to the Yankees. I can see him being a great fit on the Yankees. And like I said, if you see him pitch, he is a headhunter, not – saying that in a negative way, but a picture that will move batters off of the plate. So I can see him as a perfect fit on the Yankees. Also, Sonny Gray, people are trying to sell me still on Sonny Gray. See, the problem that I see with Gray is you don't know what you're going to get with Gray. Every time he hits the mound, you don't know if he's going to get run support. You don't know the outcome of the game. That's the only problem I have with Sonny Gray and why I don't see him as a fit on the Yankees. Imagine come playoff time. You don't have that consistency from Sonny Gray starts. We all saw it, though, come playoff time. He didn't get run support. He got hit pretty bad. I mean, that guy, people say that he has ace stuff, but like I said, if you ask for my opinion, my opinion is simple. You don't know what you're going to get out of Sonny Gray when he hits the mound. You don't know if he's going to get run support because history shows that he does not. So that's my opinion on Sonny Gray. And yes, I believe the Yankees need to add another pitcher to their starting rotation. Tanaka might have another year where he gives up a whole bunch of home runs. Ceases of Sabathia, we don't know what we're going to get out of him. Severino, does he have that year that he had, like 2017? Who knows? Gray, like I said, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. 
Montgomery. I mean, if you ask me, that's the most consistent pitcher you're going to have on your rotation. You know what you're going to get from Montgomery. So now you know and can see where I'm coming from that I believe Montgomery is more consistent than Gray. Because with Montgomery, you throw him out there. I mean, if you ask me as a rookie, his demeanor, the way he carried himself, the Yankees put him out there. And if you ask me, he did pretty good. And I don't know why the Yankees went out and traded for Jaime Garcia. I believe and still believe that if the Yankees had left Montgomery in their rotation, they would have at least won a few games that Jaime Garcia lost and Sonny Gray lost. So, like I said, that's the only problem I have with Sonny Gray. Consistency. You don't know if he's going to get run support. But with a Montgomery left-handed pitcher, you throw him out there, you know what you're going to get. And again, it just outlines my displeasure for Sonny Gray because if you get a Lance Lynn, I don't see the Yankees moving to a six-man rotation, but if they do, you can't obtain a pitcher like Lance Lynn and still have Montgomery in your rotation. That's just the dilemma I see, the consistency of Sonny Gray. Yes, I know people keep bashing me for it, but like I said, I it's my opinion, and nobody's going to sell me on something different. Everybody has their opinion. Other people have their perspectives on things. And like I said, that's just my opinion on Sonny Gray. So getting back to Tor Frazier, that's the only obstacle I see stopping the avalanche on the Yankees making moves. Once we know where Frazier is headed to, I hope soon because it's slowing everything down. We'll see the Yankees make these moves like shipping Jacoby Ellsbury out, etc. You might see a blockbuster still. Who knows? Like I said, Manny Machado is growing disgruntled in Baltimore. Like I said, if the Orioles were smart, they are showing interest in Ellsbury. Those are reports that are coming out now. But I see them flipping Ellsbury to the Diamondbacks and maybe getting a Corbin back in return. Who knows what that trade is going to look like. So, like I said, the only obstacle holding everything back is Todd Frazier. Let's see if he signs soon. Let's see if the Mets pull the trigger. I mean, obviously the Yankees are waiting for his price to come down, or maybe they want him for one year. But if Todd Frazier was a good businessman, he'll take the deal with the Mets that Maybe they'll offer him three years to stick him with his old buddy, Jay Bruce. So, after the baseball writers ceremony, look for some weird trades that you never thought would go down. They all got bunched up out there yesterday. I'm pretty sure a lot of people talked with each other, a whole bunch of general managers, etc. So, expect some trades that you didn't see happening before happening. And like I said, just wait for Todd Frazier to sign. This is when you see players like Jacoby Ellsbury being moved. I'm telling you, he's not going to be a Yankee for 2018. The Yankees already bailed out the Marlins. Now it's another team's turn to bail out the Yankees on Ellsbury. Do the Yankees eat up 65% of his contract? I believe so. Another team might get him for like $8 million a year, which is legit after what we saw Kane signed for. And like I said, Matt Kemp is going to help him even more because Matt Kemp looks even worse than Jacoby Ellsbury. So it's not really hard to move Jacoby Ellsbury when you got Matt Kemp out there and the Dodgers are trying to move him as well. So this has been Felix from MLYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. I'll check you out next time.